Okay. It looks like it works. Okay, so just so you know, my computer tends to overheat. So probably I figured out that's the thing that causes the black thing. Um, so I, I literally had it in the freezer for the hour before this. So, you know, um, we'll see how this works. Um, and I have an ice pack. Um, if someone's got a better solution, please, by all means. Um, okay, cause, so is everyone hearing me? One to five, how's everybody's connection? What? Oh. Yeah, five. Hold on for a second. Any my polls? Okay, so. Okay, one to five sounds of the connection. Boom, 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 boom. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so just so you know, my thing tends to overheat, and when it does, um, Things go crash, and then I'm just talking off some slides. Um, I try and trying this time. To, that's what happened this morning with calculus. I'm trying this time to do more on the tablet uh, ahead of time, as you can see. So, any questions, comments, issues, suggestions, thoughts? Gigglers. Okay. Now you've been muted. Okay. So um, if you want to ask questions, please do so in the thing. If you want to ask, uh, if you want to ask questions, uh, I'm sorry, please do so on chat. If you want to ask a voice question, by all means do so. But uh, again, no one on Twitch can hear you because I'm trying to maintain privacy. So we're doing those in Discord. Uh, there is supposed to be a TA here, Michael, but I don't think Michael understands how to use the system yet. Up, oh, up, oh, there he is. Uh, so Michael can help answer, que ask questions, and he can also mute and unmute people if you have questions. Um, anyway, uh, that's uh, where we are. So last time we talked about uh, when I have inverses. So again, I, I sent out an announcement. And there were a couple of things that I said in the mouse, but that were going to change. Uh, the main thing is that I need to get closer to the textbook because now we're doing remote um, and, you know, doing the shenanigans and all the fun stuff and going way out of order, which I prefer uh, because, it's, you know, the book is kind of an approximation about what I thought you needed uh, to learn. And uh, but it's very it's kind of computer science -y and we wanted something that was a little bit more what we wanted, which was more in line with IT. Um, but the fact is that now we're doing remote teaching. I need to get close to the book. So the big overall plan is we're going to finish module is we're going to finish 8.4 in the textbook. And then we're going to move to, as I said in the announcement, chapter five. Um, and chapter five is the chapter on, uh, on induction, recursion, and all of those bloody, and all of those beautiful things, um, that we of course want to talk about. Um, so that's what the uh the the plan is going forward um changes most of the quizzes are going to be now on uh um uh on um canvas uh there'll be fill in the blank multiple choice um stuff like you did for today um as you now starting next week we're going to try to use proctorio for those um, but uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. There's going to be kind of a mess with that. Um, and if you have questions, please feel free to send me an email and bother me in chat uh, during office hours, or you can just send me a direct message if I'm on Discord. I may not answer you because I'm doing something, but I usually will. Um, also, the stupid glove, that's because I'm, I found that that keeps the, the, the tablet from moving around um, when I'm writing on it. So. That's with the stupid two-finger glove. Uh, any other questions? Uh, any other questions? Okay. 
so let's go ahead and let's get started with the stuff for today. So what we want to do is we want to finish. This is all module. This is all section 8.4 in the book. Um, and what we want to do is we want to finish. Um, we want to finish uh, getting through RSA. We're probably going to finish it next time. We're kind of going to finish decoding next time. But today we at least want to get through encoding and why it uh, works and is so important. Um, so last time we talked about one, a positive integer has, um, uh, why is this not here? Why is this not there? That should be there. Okay. So last time we talked about when I was a positive integer have a uh, inverse uh, in modulo n. Now recall that if n is prime, if I have a prime, every number in the thing has an inverse. So as an example, if p was prime, if p was prime, or if n, in this case not p, if n was prime, Uh, then all elements of Z and have an inverse. So, for example, as Z5, uh, 1 over uh, 3 is the number. x so that x times 3 equals 1. Uh, so then, of course, that number uh, modulo 5 is 2. Uh, in this case, 1 over 3 equals 2, since 2 times 3 equals 6 equals 1. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that. Okay, why am I not getting fives? Well, let's try that again. One to five, how do we feel about that? Let's see. Five pole, one to five. One, two, three, four. Okay. Delayed reaction. Um there we go. Okay. Uh, and the question is now, what about in general? Do I have multiplicative inverses in general? And the answer to that is sometimes. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say of um, uh, let's let n equal six. Okay, now the question is, is there a 1 over 2 for n equals 6? Let's go this way. Uh, so the question is, um, is there a number 6 so that uh, x times is there a number in 6 so that x times 2 equals 1? Okay, and let's try a few. Okay, so, you know, 2 times 2 equals 4. That doesn't work. Um, so 3 times 2 is 0. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Uh, and 6 times 2 is 0 again. So I don't really have a number, right? There's no number so that I wind up with something that is equal to 1 modulo 6. So there's no number I can multiply by 2 to get 7 or 11. Oh, let's see. Is 11 the same thing? Modulo 6? I'm sorry, 13. Um, does that make sense? So there is no number. So that x times 2 equals 1, because 1 is uh, 
basically it's because chu divides six. Okay. So the question is, when do I have one? So one to five, how do we feel about the question, when do I have one? Okay. Um, so the answer to that question is that we use the extended Euclidean algorithm. And that gave us an actual, that we have a theorem. And the theorem says that if the GCD of A and N equals 1, in other words, if they're coprime, then 1 over A exists. So let's go back to N equals 6. Six. I don't have one for one. I don't have one for two. I don't have one for three. I don't have one for four, but five. There is a number. One fifth is well defined. How do I feel about that? One to five. That's what the theorem says. The theorem says that there is a one fifth in modulo in 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 mod six. Okay. Anyone want to hazard a guess at what it is? It's five, right? Five times five is um, equals one, okay? Because we're in modulo six, five times five is 25. And 25 equals 24 plus 1. Okay. Now, last time I went through the computation, and I used this thing called the extended Euclidean algorithm to actually find it. And the way that I found it was that I used the extended Euclidean algorithm, and I find these numbers S and T. So that 1 equals AS plus NT. And recall that the extended Euclidean algorithm, which is theorem 8.45 in the book, says the following, uh, that there exist um, integers S and T. Uh, one will be non-positive. If both of these are, po are positive integers, then one will be non-positive and one will be non-negative. One of them can be zero, uh, but one will be non-positive and one of them will be non-negative so that D equals AS plus NT. Um, and then, so there's another theorem that's in the, that's not in the book, but I mentioned last time, was that if P and Q are prime numbers, and N equals P times Q, then there are exactly P minus one times Q minus one integers, so that they're uh, N, Z, N. They're exactly, P minus one times Q minus one um, uh, numbers so that um, uh, they have inverses. Okay, so that's where we left off, and there should be a close parenthesis here. There we go. All right, are there any questions? Um, okay, so people are talking about in chat, people are talking about the uh, lectures being posted on Canvas afterward. They are, there is a setting, I did enable it on Twitch to save the lecture, but more importantly, I'm actually recording the lecture on my OBS, 
So what's going to happen is after class, um, after, you know, I do class and then I have a little, you know, break and, you know, Miller time. Um, at some point in the evening, I will uh, post the lecture on YouTube as well. Uh, so if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll be able to see it. Um, and yes, I could do the direct upload to Twitch to YouTube, but I want to like go in add like a, you know, a date and a little titles and stuff like that. But yes, I could do it straight from Twitch to YouTube. Um, any other questions? Okay, so uh, that's where we left off. Now, there's a homework problem, and you all were discussing the homework problem which is about computing inverses quickly, and not inverses, uh, powers quickly. So let's talk about that uh, briefly. So let's say I have, does everyone remember these rules of exponents from pre-calc? So if I have um, five to the fourth, okay, well, let's do 10, 10's nice. Okay, so let's do 10 here. Um, exponent rules. If I have 100 times 100, the way I get the answer is I draw one and then I count my zeros, right? So there's four zeros, so I get one, one, two, three. One to five, how do we feel about that? I just count the zeros. Okay. All right, so that's the same thing as saying that 10 squared times 10 squared equals 10 to the fourth. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so I've got 100 times 100. And then I wind up with something, and there should be four zeros here, shouldn't there, because I'm an idiot. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, so, um, anyway. So I add these two numbers up in the thing. So I wind up with this fact that this equals 10 times 2 plus 2. How do we feel about that? So if I have, I didn't give you the 1 to 5. Sorry about that. So if I have a to the n times a to the m, that is the same thing as saying a to the n times m. Um, I'm sorry, n plus m. I can write today. All this technology is distracting. Um, so that's the general rule for adding exponents. And there's also this one that a to the n to the m equals a to the n times m. And that's our other major exponent rule. So I can combine these two exponent rules, um, and I can calculate these modular exponents quickly because I can deal with these things. I can, I can, I can, um, I can reduce what I'm talking about to talking about those things instead of talking about the big things. So let me give you an example. Let's say I wanted to compute two to the fifteenth. Uh, I can't do that because now it's going to start failing. Okay, so say I wanted to compute 2 to the a mod 5, 8 mod 5. It's, it's basically done now. I have to restart it. So suppose I wanted to, uh, to compute that thing. Excuse me. So, how do I go about computing that number? Well, 
Well, I could just think about, yes, it's overheating. Yes, they should start a GoFundMe. Maybe I'll start a Patreon page. Yes, the school should be providing me with all this cool stuff, but the school says just posting my notes is enough uh, uh, for my job. So, you know, I could just post notes and be done with it, uh, according to the school. Um, seems kind of horrible to me. Uh, but, you know, I'm trying to do live streams. I'm, I, I have this backup plan, which is this thing. But as you can see that the backup plan has more bugs than the first plan. Um, so, you know, uh, there was a backup plan. The backup plan is a failure. Um, I'm probably going to go order an iPad or something so that I can have a backup plan. Just thinking about starting up again. There we go. Okay, so I can, instead of computing, uh, um, uh, 2 to the 8 mod 5, okay? So instead of computing all of this stuff, right, I know what 2 cubed is. Is, is everyone on board with that? So I know that, uh, let's see if I can do this. I know that 2 to the 8, equals um, 2 cubed, right, 2 to the 3 plus 3 plus 2. Is everyone on board with, the, oh, sorry, uh, I want 8, don't I? Yes, 6 plus 2, perfect. So, um, which that means that that's equal to 2 cubed, times 2, oops, 2 cubed, times 2 squared. And these are numbers that are easy to compute. 8 is something easy to compute. And 4 is something easy to compute. Is everyone on board with that? So if I want to compute modulos, I can actually do this very quickly. Because what is 8 mod 5? All right, 8 mod 5 is 3, right? So this problem just became 3 times 3 times 4. And 3 times 3 is 6. What is 6 mod 5? Exactly. So if I wanted to compute these things in modulo arithmetic, I don't have to compute 2 to the 8 all the way out and then mod it. What I do is I break up everything, and then I, I break up 8 into things that are easy to compute, 3, 3, and 2. And then I compute the pieces, and then I mod each piece. And then I multiply some of those pieces together and mod them. And then I compute, uh, you know, the pieces together. You know, I get 1 times 4 because 6 equals 1. And 6 is, you know, oh, how did I get 6? Because I'm an idiot because that should be 9, shouldn't it? Ugh. It's It's been one of those days. So that's uh, 9 mod 4 is 4. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, which is 16, and 16 mod 5 equals 1. Thank you. Uh, don't I feel like an idiot now? And it's going all over the, uh, the internet. Um, so, which is, you know, where you want it to go. Anyway, getting back to this, um, I'm distracted by the fact that my technology has now failed. Uh, how do we feel about that 1 to 5? Yeah, I did black magic to get the six. Yes, exactly. So how do we feel about that? That kind of way that I could just break it up and do simple operations and then make it work. Besides the fact that I screwed it up um, because I can't multiply small numbers. 
which made me uh, happy. Um, okay, let's see if the ice pack has done its job on here. Uh, we'll restart this and we'll keep going while it's restarting. All right, so you think for all the you think for all of the uh, the the money that we spend on uh, that I spent on this stupid tablet that it would be able to cool itself better than it does. Um, anyway, so that's one way to compute these things. How do we uh, we feel about that? We said fives are nice and beautiful. Uh, we can do another example if you so desire. Uh, why don't you compute for yourself? Um, I need to turn it on. Okay, so think about computing the following. Um, This thing has a parallax of about that long. Um, think about computing the following. Um, what if I wanted to compute 5 to the 16th mod 3? All right, so go ahead and start working that one out. Ah, we're back on the tablet. Mm. There it is. Yeah, so 5 to the 16th. Now, someone just said it's just 1. How do you get that? Okay, so 5 to the 16th mod 3. Well, first of all, that's a pain in the neck. Why do I have 5 mod 3? Right? Who cares? That base is actually 2 to the 16th, isn't it? And that equals 2 times uh, 8 plus 8. Uh, that's kind of a pain in the neck. Why don't we do 2 to the 4th to the 4? Okay, so now I'm going to compute 2 to the 4th, and then I'm going to take that computation to the 4th power. Okay? So if I do 2 to the 4th, uh, uh, there's a question, why is it base 2? Because 5 mod 3 is 2. So it's actually 5 is equal to 2 mod 3. Um, so now I'm going to take 2 to the 4th to the 4. Okay? Well, 2 to the 4th, that's the same thing as 2 squared times 2 squared to the 4th. And 4 mod 3 is 1. And 2 squared is 1 to the 4th, and that just equals 1. Um, so some of these questions, they can look really, really hard, but you can, you know, get at them very quickly. Uh, one to five, how do we feel about that?
Okay. Um, uh, so the question is, can you do five squared and do that eight times? No, that's fine. Um, uh, you could do a bunch of other things. Um, You get 1 times 1 because 2 squared mod 3 gives you 1. Yes. Um, so the way I got to 1 was I did 2 squared. Uh, so this right here, 2 to the 4th to the 4th. 2 to the 4th equals 2 to the 2 plus 2, which is the same thing as 2 squared times 2 squared. Okay. And then when I did that, I got 2 squared times 2 squared. I wind up with this is 4 times 4, but 4 equals 1. So that's how you wind up with 1. So the question is, should you always mace the beast? Yes, you should, you should do what works for you. Um, the thing, I usually want to get rid of that base because, you know, I, I'm trying to, to figure out what it is, but it's modulo arithmetic, right? It's a clockwork. So 5 equals 2 in, on the clock of 3. Um, and it does still work if you do it a bunch of other ways. Uh, but, you know, that's the beauty of math. It works. Um, if you're doing what you're doing is valid, it should come out to the same answer. If you don't get the same answer, something's wrong. Uh, we don't. We did something invalid somewhere, and we need to check it. Okay, so that's how I do these modulos quickly. Now, let's flip to RSA and let's see. Um, okay, so it's 4:04, and I need to be done before the World of Warcraft starts streaming, right? Um, so uh, let's talk about RSA. So let's put some of this information together and let's do RSA. So let's say I want to encrypt a message in RSA. So Alice is going to create a private key and she's going to choose two prime numbers. In this case, she's going to pick 5 and 11. Now, of course, I don't want to uh, pick numbers that are this small. And if you open up your putty, uh, Putty Keygen. So if I open up my Putty, my Putty Key Generator, and I ask it to generate a private key for me, I'm going to ask it, this is the minimum that Putty will go, and it's going to give me a warning when I do it. So I ask it to generate my private key, and it's going to yell at me that I'm not using a decent number of bits, right? My primes, I want my primes to be 2,000 digits long, uh, not 256 digits long. But let's do it anyway. And then I do that, and it gets me a whole bunch of hexadecimal here, which are these big numbers. Okay? And this is my public key. So I can give this out to everybody. As a matter of fact, I can give it out to my server. Matter of fact, that's exactly what I did here. So if I want to go on to my, uh, let's see, do I have pageant up? Well, that's good. Nope. Nope. Uh, Okay, so if I look in my file here, you'll see that I have in my SSH folder, okay? Um, okay, are we now degenerating into talking about games, or can we focus back on what we're actually trying to do? Um, I play cool math competitively. Very nice. Um, so if I pull up my private key, okay, I'm not actually going to show you what my private key is. 
But the point is that if I have my private key, I can now call up SSH. Uh, let me and what I'm going to do is I can connect directly to my server on my USF web. And you have access to one of these servers too. You have a myweb.usf.edu. And then when I log in here, it's going to use my SSH key. Oops, I'm clicking on the wrong place. When I log in here, it's going to use my SSH key to connect to the host. And there you can see all of the files that I have on this particular, um, in my Canvas files in the, on this particular server. And the reason why this works is because I put my public key into the server and then I use my private key to access it. Now, we're talking about using the private key to encode messages, um, but one of the other things you can use SSH for, I'm sorry, RSA for, is to authenticate people. And this is authenticating me using this thing. So let's look again at the system as a whole. Come back over here. No, I don't want to save. I want to exit that workspace. I want to get canceled. I want to go away. There we go. OK. So I create my, my RSA private key by doing this. The computer's doing this. Of course, the computer's doing it with much long numbers. So Alice computes hers. Alice computes hers. She picks two prime numbers. In this case, she picks 5 and 11. These are the numbers that are actually in your textbook on page... Uh, Page, it says 536. So if you go to page 536 in your textbook, you can actually see the numbers that I'm about to use on this. Um, and everyone leaves chats because they're like, no. Oh, by the way, yes, you do have access to your own server. Um, that is the student server, um, not my uh, faculty server, because the faculty server doesn't have as good software as the student one does. Go figure. Um, the student one is just running Linux, and you can put an SSH key if you wanted to do that. Uh, you could put an SSH key on your uh, on your thing. And the way that you access it the first time is you have to use your NetID and password. Uh, but uh, let's see. Let's pull up WinSCP again. If you want to know, it's at ustorefiles.usf.edu. Um, and the... The, the host name is myweb.usf.edu. Um, anyway, um, and they did not, so the at mail.usf.edu, people are asking questions about this, I should address it. Um, they've given you now a second email address. So before they're like, I have two email addresses because I'm both faculty and a student. OK, so I had an at mail.usf.edu email address as a student, and then I have an at usf.edu email as a member of the faculty. And then the uh, now you all have Microsoft emails because you're all using Microsoft Teams, as is now said in the thing. Um, so it used to be that all of these things were only accessible to faculty. And then they decided to give you access to Office 365 through a contract. Uh, but they didn't give you the email, and now they've given everybody the email. Um, so um, you can do various things. I forward my at usf.edu email to my Google because I like Google better. Uh, your results may vary. Anyway, getting back to this, um, now that I've been horribly distracted. Um, so what she does is she computes these numbers. She computes... Um, Let's go back to the board. Okay, so she computes this, these two numbers. She picks P equals 5 and Q equals uh, 11. How do we feel about what she's picking here? Uh, P equals 5. These are two prime numbers. They happen to be small here. Um, thank you for telling everybody that. 
I'm going to go grab a bowl of cereal, which is fine, you know, if you're in the middle of class. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Um, so, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pick these two prime numbers. And thus, I wind up with PQ equals 55. Now, remember that theorem about the list of numbers with inverses, okay? There are 40 of these numbers with inverses. And I know that because I can compute uh, P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in Z40. I'm going to work in the integers modulo 40. Um, and then I'm going to pick a number with an inverse, in this case, 3. Now, uh, it, so I pick E equals 3, and I compute the inverse modulo 40, which is 27 in this case. And I did that with the Euclidean algorithm. Haha, -ha, I used a website. Um, so when I compute that inverse, notice something that's happened here. In order to get what the 40 was, I'm not going to share the 40. I'm going to share the 55, and I'm going to share the 3. But I'm not going to share the 40, and I'm not going to share the 27. Okay? And I'm not sharing the 5, the, the, the five and I'm not sharing the 11. Okay? I'm sharing my composite number between the two primes. Now, remember, this number will be, you know, 356, you know, uh, several thousand prime digits long. Is everyone on board with that? So is everyone on board with what I'm tr what I'm going to share? Which numbers I'm actually going to share? All right. So when I share these numbers, in order to get the 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 forty, I actually need to know what the primes were. So now Bob wants to send Alice a message. How does Bob do it? The encryption algorithm, the ciphertext, and remember here that I'm uh, I'm doing so the simpler thing. Now, normally what you do when you do this is that you share a big block of text. You don't just send, send one number or a string of numbers. And the book has this very unrealistic thing where what it does is it shares ciphertext as A equals 0, 1, B equals 0, 2, et cetera, et cetera. And then it computes each number. No, you can figure that out using frequency analysis. What you're going to do is you're going to have a very large number that represents a block of stuff. Um, and then what you're going to do is encrypt the entire block as a message. Okay? So that the numbers for each block are completely different and you don't and wind up with being able to do frequency analysis. But for the sake of this argument, we're going to send – Bob is going to send Alice, not the number five because I always use that. Uh, the number 15. So I'm going to have Bob send Alice the number 15. Uh, okay. So, go away. So, how exactly... i got to put the glove back on because now it's moving the thing. How exactly is that going to work? Well, the ciphertext, if you look in the book, it has the thing in there. But I'm going to compute ciphertext is equal to C, the ciphertext, the number I'm going to send, equals M to the E mod P times Q. Right, and that in that case is N. We had P times Q equals uh, 55. Okay, so if Bob wants to send Alice the numeric message 15, Bob is going to compute the following. He's going to compute C equals 15 cubed mod 55. Okay, now the question is, of course, what is 15 mod cube? What is 15 cube mod 35? Well, 15 cubed is 3,000 something. And I wind up with 20. 
Yeah, so N is M represents the, the plain text. And it should be noticed that I'm not sharing P times, I'm not sharing P and Q. I'm sharing P times Q. So really, I should say N equals 55. And I should really say to get this aggregate, because he doesn't know what P and Q are. He only knows that he's doing mod N. And this N is 55. Okay. And M is the plain text. M is the thing to encrypt. In this case, we're encrypting the number 15, the block represented by the number 15. It could be a letter. It could be, I don't care what it is. Okay. It just is what it is. It's, how do we feel about that? One to five. Uh, let's come back over here. One to five. There we go. Oh, nope. There we go. Five pole. One to five. There we go. That five pole thing is so cool. Okay, so what we're going to do in order to do encryption is we're going to compute this number and it happens to be 20. So, Bob, is Bob here by the way? Raise your hand, Bob. Is Alice here or do we need a new Alice? Bob sends the number 20. Yes. Hello, Alice. Okay. So, um, now, the question is, how do we decrypt the message? Well, to decrypt the message, I'm going to use my private key. So, the private key, Alice keeps private. Uh, P, Q, oops, and D. And D, oops, D is the inverse of this number, modulo 40, or modulo uh, P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So D here in this case equals, not, it's not D, that's E, that's D. So D equals 1 over E in Z 40. Okay. So when Alice wants to decrypt the message, she computes the following. M equals C to the D mod P times Q. Okay. So the question is, what is this here? Well, C is 20. D was 27. And I want to calculate 2 to the 27 mod 55. So how do we go about doing that? Let me ask you something. If I throw in 20 to the 27 into my calculator, is it going to give me an answer? Yeah. What answer is it going to give you? Grab your calculator and throw 20 to the 27 into your calculator. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get stack overflow. Um, right? Or you're going to you're going to wind up out of your floating point integers or whatever you're going to wind up with. Okay. Yes, it doesn't like that. So what I need to do is I need to calculate this number. In order to calculate this number, 
I'm going to wind up, I just need to split it up. So 27 is what? Uh, among other things, it's 9 times 3, right? Very nice. You got me at a picture and you green screen me out. They green screen the background out. Okay. So uh, is that now going to be an emote on my server? Um, so I'm going to calculate this by calculating something reasonable like 20 cubed to the ninth mod 55. Right? Is everyone on board with that? So let's see. 20 cubed. That the thing will do. That the calculator will do because that's 80,000. That's a nice little number. And then I just do a little mod 55 here. And that's something that the computer will do. So this is going to wind up being 25 to the ninth mod 55. Well, let's do it again. 25 cubed, cubed mod 55. Okay, and 25 cubed mod 55 is 5. So now I wind up with 5 cubed mod 55. Everyone on board with that? 1 to 5, how do we feel about this? Oh, I'm so touched. Uh, there they go. And then I want to calculate 5 cubed 2055. Well, that one's going to be nice and easy. You might even be able to do that one without a calculator, but that equals 15. And look, that was the original message. Uh, 25 cubed becomes 5 cubed. Uh, no, 25 cubed cubed became 25 cubed, became 5 cubed. Okay, so this was 25 cubed cubed. And then I took it mod 55. Um, which three are you talking about? So I this one right here, I did 20 cubed mod 55 to the ninth. And this step was to do here, uh, was to do 25. Uh, so that became 25 mod 55 to the ninth. Okay, and then I did, uh, which became 25 to the ninth mod 55. Um, and that's how I got the other piece. Um, and then I just modded it out. Uh, so, um, Okay, so how do, one to five, how do we feel about that now? Okay. All right. Um, so if you have more questions about this, please um, come talk to me about it in office hours. We'll go through it uh, because that is kind of a slick math trick. Um, the, there were a couple of... Um, uh, uh, yeah, it is one of those things that is like, you know, is it's a small yappy type dog, right? It's got a lot of bark, but it doesn't have a lot of bite once you get over the intimidation factor. Um, so these are always popular, by the way, on the punum competitions as, you know, uh, as warm up exercises. Um, yeah, if you play with it, you'll you'll have some fun with it um, and it'll make sense to you. Anyway, so that's how she decrypted the message. Uh, let's see how many minutes, how much time do I have left? Uh, 15 minutes. Uh, it's not really enough time to go over a new subject. So, um, what we'll talk about then next time, uh, we'll finish this right now. Uh, we talked about, 
Uh, we talked about encrypting and decrypting with RSA and a bunch of the other ciphers. The next time we'll finish up this section by talking about the theorems that say why it works, um, which is on page 554 if you want to do it. So next time we will finish why this works. Um, and then we will start uh, chapter uh, five. Are there any questions uh, about this? Uh, I'll open the floor for questions. Uh, if you have any um, questions, comments, issues, suggestions. Oh, and we'll finish off why this works in message authentication. That's the other thing we need to do. Okay, um, so yes, I will be posting the notes. Um, as soon as I play st stop, you can actually watch the thing on Twitch uh, right away. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to finish why this works and do message authentication, and then, then we'll start Chapter 5 on induction, and um, uh, we'll be good. All right? Okay, so I'm going to turn off the, uh, the Twitch now, and I will answer questions for the next uh, uh, 15 minutes that are supposed to remain in class on uh, in chat.